All right, Professor, what are we talking about today? What, where in space are we? I'm going to talk about the Messier 81. So in space, we're in Ursa Major. This is one I've been saving up because Messier 81 is a beautiful grand design spiral galaxy. Professor, is there a threshold for a spiral galaxy to go from being a bog standard spiral galaxy to a grand design? There really isn't. And it's, you know, there are degrees. So the, the, the two extremes are, we describe them as grand design, where you get these beautiful sweeping spiral structure over much of the face of the galaxy and the flocculent spiral galaxies where you get lots of little bits and pieces. But actually there's lots of galaxies that are somewhere in between that they seem to have two spiral arms, but other little bits and pieces as well. So it's not a clearly defined thing. But in the case of M81, it really does have two very clear, very strong spiral arms in it. So it's also known as Bode's galaxy. That's because in the 18th century, Johann Bode was the first person to discover it. It was then subsequently independently discovered by Méchant, who was Messier's collaborator in the Messier catalogue. It is pretty. It's glorious. And it's sufficiently big and bright. If you go somewhere really dark, you can just about see it with the naked eye. It's what's called circumpolar, which means it's far enough north that actually it never sets. So it's actually visible for most of the year. It's one of the objects I took a picture of from my back garden as well. I'll send you the picture so you can include or not. <laughs> You're getting really into your backyard garden pictures at the moment, aren't you? No, they really are keeping me, keeping me a little bit saner by taking some pictures. And actually, I really, you know, the, I guess the other thing to say about them is I really believe now in astronomy right that actually now i've actually taken pictures for myself from my back garden it's much less, somehow even as a professional astronomer you know it's now much less of an abstract exercise because actually i've been out there and taken the pictures myself all right well just to show you up professor right now side by side on the screen we will have your picture from the backyard <laughs> and a hubble space <laughs> telescope picture <laughs> There are definitely things you can do with a Hubble Space Telescope picture you can't do with mine. And in particular, this galaxy is sufficiently close. It's about 12 million light years away. It's in one of the closest sort of groups of galaxy to the Milky Way. But it's sufficiently close that with the Hubble Space Telescope, not only can you get a glorious picture of the galaxy, but actually you can resolve it down to seeing individual stars as well. And that means that some of the things that we've previously talked about mostly in the context of star clusters within the Milky Way we can actually do with this galaxy. Namely we can construct these things called colour magnitude diagrams where you just basically plot how red or blue the star is on the x-axis and how bright or faint it is on the y-axis. Stars of different ages populate different bits of that diagram so we can even reconstruct the sort of star formation history of different bits of this galaxy by looking at these colour magnitude diagrams. The other thing that's interesting about it is it's a sort of useful test bed because it does have these grand design spiral structure and we have these ideas about what grand design spiral structure is how it originates and there are two aspects to this one is we think it's usually something to do with interactions so for example the other classic grand design spiral galaxies another of the messier objects m51 the whirlpool galaxy where you can see the companion that's kind of stirring up that beautiful structure to it but the other part of the story is that we think it's possible that this grand design spiral structure can have quite a long life. It could just be a wave that's kind of propagating around the galaxy. And if it's just a wave, then it can just keep traveling around and around the galaxy pretty much indefinitely. And therefore, actually, it might not have anything to do with interactions. The nice thing about that story is that the long lived spiral structure, this, this wave picture of it, makes a very specific prediction, which is that the way stars form, so stars form in the spiral arms because that's where gas is being compressed, right? If it's a wave, then that's actually gas sort of squeezing together and that's where stars will form. But the stars are actually traveling faster than the wave. So that means that as the wave travels around, the, the material that's going to turn into stars is traveling around too, and it overtakes the spiral arm. So what you expect is you have a gas cloud comes along, it travels into the spiral arm, stars form, and then it travels out the front and the stars start getting older. That means there should be a very characteristic picture that as you look in front of a spiral arm, you should see very young stars just formed right at the front of the spiral arm. And then as you go further and further forward from it, you should be seeing stars that formed in the previous generations of material that passed through that arm. So they get older and older. But of course, with these color magnitude diagrams and the resolved stars from the Hubble Space Telescope, uh, data, we can actually do that. So it's a paper entitled Testing Density Wave Theory with Resolved Stellar Populations Around Spiral Arms in M81. Effectively, they, they did exactly that. They analysed the Hubble Space Telescope data. They looked at these colour magnitude diagrams for different bits of the galaxy moving forward from the spiral arms. They looked for this signature of them getting older as you go further away from the spiral arm, and they found absolutely nothing. <laughs> there is no gradient in M81. 
right. you don't see this effect that they were looking for at all. And what this is saying is that at least in this case, it looks like this is something which is not a, a long-lived density wave. It's some sort of short-lived phenomenon that's been stirred up. And interestingly, if you look at the gas around M81, you find that actually it's very disturbed and it's sort of clearly interacting with M82 and actually with one of the other galaxies in this group as well. So it looks like there have been in the recent past sort of fairly close interactions between these galaxies, which are the things that have stirred up this short-lived spiral structure. So it looks like we just happen to have caught it at the moment where it has this beautiful spiral structure. It isn't one of these long-lived density waves that would have that nice signature to it. Do those long-lived density waves, that, that theory of uh, spiral galaxies, is that like legit or is that in question? That's certainly sort of been the conventional view. At the very least, what this analysis seems to show is that at least in this particular case, that's not the answer. It could be that, you know, there are multiple ways that you can actually make spiral structure, right? That, that some of them could be these long-lived density waves. Other ones could have been stirred up much more recently. It could be a more complicated story. It's not very satisfactory because, you know, you in science, you're always looking for this, this thing called Occam's razor, the simplest answer. And the simplest answer would be, you know, there's one mechanism that makes spiral structure. But maybe Maybe the universe doesn't work that way. Maybe there are some of these sort of long-lived um, density waves and others which are much more rapidly stirred up. Or could it be that there's been more churn in the stars ahead of the wave than we thought and they've been stirred up a bit more? And you haven't got that nice gradient. It could be. And, and you know, it, again, that sort of fits in with this picture of it being a somewhat disturbed galaxy, which maybe has had interactions with other things. It could be that several density waves have been excited, which are kind of creating a more confusing picture. If you look in the atomic gas for this galaxy, you find that actually, although that grand design spiral structure is there, it looks like there are multiple spiral structures there, right? There are there are broken bits, there are bifurcating, so arms which split, which again fits in with the idea that there have been a series of recent interactions, each one of which generated its own set of spiral structure, but then the sum of those, those is gonna kind of complicate this picture as to what's gonna happen with the stars. Professor, we obviously reside in the Milky Way, which has arms. Do we understand the geography of the Milky Way well enough yet to be able to point our telescopes towards the leading edges of our arms where the stars are a lot closer and easier to resolve and do that same analysis but in our own arms. We're getting there. In the Milky Way, you can pick up these whole clusters and again, you can figure out what the ages of the clusters is, again, from the same kind of analysis, looking at these colour magnitude diagrams. And people have looked at, if we look at clusters in the spiral arms and then moving away from them, and there is some evidence that that picture is going on in the Milky Way. But the Milky Way is a really hard place to do that because we're actually in the Milky Way and, you know, there's lots of obscuration from dust, plus there's an ambiguity that it's hard to tell exactly how far away something is because we're seeing it through the galaxy. It could be very nearby or further away. Whereas if you look at a galaxy like M81, basically the whole galaxy is at the same distance away from us. So we don't have ambiguities as to what the distances to things are. Of the galaxy around the outside, you've got that central bulge there, but you've also got this bar running through the middle. And then at the ends of that bar, you'll see there's sort of two concentrations there. And if you actually look at a picture of a galaxy, here's a nice picture of a galaxy. This is a very famous galaxy, the Whirlpool Galaxy M51. And if you look at pictures of galaxies, what makes them beautiful is this beautiful spiral structure that you often see in them. 